Hello world. Good morning. Welcome to the coronavirus daily stream. Um, what are we on? I think day six or day seven together. And I got to tell you, uh, I'm not sleeping much like you guys aren't. Um, listen, this is a scramble. It's a hustle for all of us. But every morning when I wake up, I am so excited that I get to come together with you at 8 a.m. So thank you for showing up and joining me today. And so before I talk about the topic today, which is actually a tough topic, and I hope that we have HR and business leaders that are joining us this morning who are going to talk to me. So if you're watching me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, or anywhere else, uh, please join us live at arbez.com forward slash live stream. Join the conversation, bring your best practices, and help your professional peers in other businesses who are doing this for the first time, help them do it well. All right. So comments, chat, bring your best practices. First of all, where are you? Are you drinking water? Are you drinking tea? Uh, are you sitting at home? Um, here in Minnesota, we're going into uh, kind of lockdown, sheltering in space on in space. I wish we were in space right now, sheltering in place on Friday. And so um, but right now there's some people that are still in offices and things. Anyway, where are you? Maybe you're sitting out under a tree because the sun is shining. Uh, where are you? What are you drinking? Second of all, um, one good thing. Is there one fun thing that you've been able to do in the middle of this coronavirus epidemic, uh, especially for all of you that are working from home for the first time ever or who have kids home when you weren't expecting them? What are you doing that's creative to survive and thrive in the middle of, of the, this epidemic? You know, are you and your kids making meals together to take to your elderly neighbor? I don't know. In the comments, share. We're in this together and it, these are tough times. So let's share a little light on uh, the good things that are happening out there. Speaking of good news, if you are in America with me, and I, hello, shout out, by the way, to all of my friends around the world that are tuning in to join us. Welcome. This is not just about America. This is about all of us. So welcome, but we do have some pretty exciting news that happened yesterday in America. Our Congress, our elected officials came together furiously and fabulously, and they passed a $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus bill. And I'm going to share the details with you quickly. All you have to do is turn on your phone to get updates on what this all means, but I'm just going to quickly share with you the highlights that um, this bill means to you and your families right now across America. Number one, hospitals are getting billions of dollars for healthcare, supply, staff, all of it. Hospitals are getting the money they need to stay open and help us in this time of need. Amen. Number two, Congress has decided to send direct checks to Americans who need it most, and that is people with adjusted gross incomes of $99,000 a year last year or less. They're sending $1,200 per person to people that made less than $75,000 last year and um, a little bit less money, but they're going to give reduced payments up to $99,000 adjusted gross income. Don't ask me for details. Go online. It's all out there. Number three, student loan payments have been suspended. In other words, we know you can't pay your student loans right now. It's okay. It's okay until we get through this. And I don't know what the timeline is that they probably don't. Number four, if you were worried about your real ID, don't. You no longer have to get that done by October. Um, number five, which is most meaningful to me and my business and helping job seekers uh, like, I, like we do in this business, historic boost to unemployment insurance benefits. So an extra 600 bucks a week for four months that's tremendous. Think about what that money can do to put food on people's uh, tables. Um, Congress is thinking about adding 13 weeks. Right now, today, um, how much unemployment you have depends on the state that you're in. Go to your state's website to figure that out. Number three, for the first time ever, for the first time ever, our federal government is extending unemployment benefits to gig workers. Let me tell you why this is a big deal. If you are still working as a full-time employee, then you have no idea what a big deal this is, but 36% of Americans are working something other than a full-time salaried job. That means they are self-employed consultants, freelancers, contractors, independents. They have to hunt for their own business 
and they eat what they catch. And up until yesterday, they have never had access to unemployment benefits. So this is absolutely remarkable that our Congress decided to do this. It's wonderful. Um, don't ask me about the details. Go online to figure them out. Um, and, and a lending program for small businesses. I am a small business. And fortunately, I don't need to take advantage of this, but there are millions of small businesses that are in a desperate financial situation. And uh, Congress has decided to do forgivable loans. What does that mean? You can get out a loan for cheap right now immediately to keep your employees going. And that loan may be forgivable. It's not guaranteed. You have to meet certain criteria. But anyway, Congress has thrown a lifeboat to us. That is what they just did. Airline industry, protections against foreclosures and evictions. So people who are living on the edge, who live month to month, um, are not going to get kicked out of their apartments or their homes. Uh, the Kennedy Center is a spectacular institution of, of arts and culture. Um, they were looking at laying off 800 employees. Um, I've been there. I grew up near D.C. It's a beautiful place. And they're going to support the Kennedy Center because it's such an institution and an important fixture in our country. Um, food, more money to feed hungry families. Um, evacuation funds to get Americans home who are abroad right now. And money for the Peace Corps so that we can continue to do good work around the world, which is our heritage as Americans and in the middle of this crisis we may be down on our knees, but we're not going to stop helping people around the world because once again, this is not just about us. This is about the world. It's like 9-11. It wasn't just about us. It was an attack against democracy. It was an attack against human beings. So is this. And we are fighting together with people around the world. So anyway, my heart is full. I'm super excited. Turn on your phone and you'll have a deluge of information about this bill. So that's that. I hope you're excited. Can I get a hoorah? <laughs> All right, so that's that. Um, what I also wanna say to you is one little piece of information. So this is Congress, this is federal American benefits. Check with your local state. I actually do need to, to share uh, one other uh, slide with you here. Your state elected officials are also coming together right now to do really special things for you. So, um, here it is. If you are in the state of Minnesota with me, the state of Minnesota is working furiously to do more for you. If you want to get daily updates on what they're doing, go to www.mn.gov forward slash deed. It's on your screen. Uh, figure out this is the Department of Employment and Economic Development. Find deed in your state, figure out where to go to get daily updates from your elected officials, from your state government. And you can be on top of what your state is doing to add benefits to the federal package. And that's what states do. They drag money in from special buckets and they add on to unemployment insurance and food assistance and hospital funding and all sorts of things. So thank you to everybody on the front lines right now. That includes, yes, our elected officials, but especially our healthcare workers, our grocery workers, our delivery folks, the post office, the banks, all of the essential businesses that are staying open, risking their own health to get out there and keep us whole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We know you're working sun up to sun down and we just really appreciate it. And now, by the way, um, I see your comments. I wanna say, so Dave is, uh, loves having dinner with everybody in his family, which is great. John has been playing games with his kids. Um, I came home last night and my son was playing uh, classical guitar with my mother-in-law and he's never played classical guitar before. He taught himself guitar about four months ago and he plays uh, original music and other stuff. And there they were, but anyway, great, great, great. Keep it up, keep it up, you guys. So here's what I'm here to talk to you about today. All right, you ready? How to lay off with dignity and respect. And so again, a welcome to all of you, every single one of you, and a special welcome to HR and business leaders who have chosen to join us today. So if you want to live chat with me, please do so at www.arbez.com forward slash live stream. Arbez, Stefan, if will you put that up on the screen, please, arbez.com forward slash live stream. Come on over there and you can chat live with me. Again, I want HR and business leaders to give me your best tips to the rookies out there who are laying people off for the first time. 
Every day I'm trying to figure out what are the most important messages for me to deliver daily in these live streams. And um, my business partner said to me two days ago, he said, you've got to cover layoffs. You've got to, you've got to tell people how to do layoffs well. Um, and what a brilliant idea. I've been here before. Many of you, most of you have been here before as well, but Arbez was right in the trenches during the Great Recession 11 years ago. Um, you know, I also have been in the whole layoff situation my, you know, my entire career periodically. And here's, here's the thing. A bad layoff is like a bad breakup. So humor me for a moment. I want you to think about the worst breakup ever. I want you to remember that jerk who dumped you like you were a worthless piece of meat. Instead of having the courage to sit face to face with you and say, you're a great person. We've had a lot of fun, but this is not a fit for me. Instead of doing that, they send you a text or they say nothing and just stop responding to you or they dump you publicly or, I mean, we could go on and on and on, right? So anyway, every single one of us has had a bad breakup. And I want you to think about the impact that that bad breakup had on you. His name was Brian. I was 16 years old and he didn't have the courage to pick up the phone and tell me that he didn't want to see me anymore. He just stopped calling and didn't respond to me. And listen, I'm over it. I don't have bad dreams about it anymore, but I was 16 and I still remember it like it was yesterday. This is what a bad layoff is doing to people. And I know this because I've been laid off badly. I know this because when I was a rookie manager, I was a director of recruiting. I was 26 years old. The dot-com bubble burst. Y2K had happened. I was working for a global IT consulting firm. I was running a team of 12 recruiters. We were on fire. I had the number one team globally. Um, absolutely loved my job. We were on fire. And then Y2K finished. Bada bing, bada boom. Then the dot com bubble burst, and it was the the nail in the coffin. And I had to lay people off. And my first layoff was horrible. I it took me a week. I cr cried because that was helpful. I was an emotional disaster. And I'm gonna share some tips and advice from my favorite HR leader, Barb Dusick, because she was in the trenches with me. She was my HR leader in that moment and she guided me through this and she prepared me to do it well. She prepared me to do it well and I didn't listen to her because I thought I knew better at 26, rookie, rookie, rookie manager. Anyway, long story short, I did everything wrong. I cared deeply about the gentleman that I was laying off and um, unfortunately, because I cared so much, I let my emotions lead and I cried in the middle of the meeting when I was laying him off. I mean, what on earth? He said, I get it. Let's talk about this later. And I didn't let him leave. I mean, it was just ugly. So anyway, I know from that experience that you need to think about this. But I especially know what a bad layoff can do to somebody and why you have a responsibility to figure out how to do it better because of the Great Recession. So 11 years ago during the Great Recession, um, our Bez was two years old. Our income went to zero overnight. Like all of you, our retirement kitty got cut in half. We were freaking out. We were beside ourselves. We didn't know how we were going to feed our family. Um, and what did we do? We decided to start a job club and start helping unemployed uh, Americans. And so in the middle of all that, we were picking people up off the floor. And here's what I need you to know. Losing your job stinks. It's, it's, it's hard emotionally. It's hard on your career. And it's hard financially. But if your boss does it with dignity and respect, you can stand back up again a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks later, and get back out there and go find a job. But if it's a bad breakup, if your boss doesn't have the courage to do it well, you're going to sit on that floor unable to even sit up for weeks. And then you want to know what happens? Because I watched this with thousands of people during the last big economic downturn. They were on the floor and I would go in there and I would give them an arm and I would say, we can do this, you can do this, let's go. They couldn't go there with me. Instead, they needed counseling. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. 
it doesn't have to be that way. There is a better way. And in the next 15 minutes, I'm excited to share with you some incredible advice from two of my friends um, and professional partners, uh, Heather Hefner and Barb Dusick. Um, again, we're throwing these live streams together day by day. And when we decided to do this topic, I said, I need help reached out to my network and Barb came through and Heather came through and I'm gonna share their advice with you. And again, in the comments, I want advice from you as well. Um, so we're not doing bad breakups, we're doing good breakups. We're doing good layoffs and let's talk about how. Um, Susan already is coming in with tremendous advice and she says, do not terminate people on Fridays or Mondays. Absolutely right, Susan, don't do it. Mondays, studies have shown it's just, People don't handle them well on Mondays, but on Fridays, the worst thing about laying somebody off on Friday is they're moving into the weekend, they go home, climb in a cave, and they have absolutely zero support structure. So instead, be thoughtful about when you lay somebody off, make it a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and make sure that you are able to give them some support structures and plug them into some resources that they can tap before the weekend happens. Thank you, Susan. Let's see, Catherine Fitzsimmons, uh, senior Director, Advancing Strategy, Solving People. Um, so I think Catherine's saying hello. Khaki, hello, Khaki, how are you? You've been through this. Um, all right, and um, I see a question that if we have time, if we have time, I'm gonna take the, you know, what about hiring? The question, are, actually, I'm gonna take it right now. Are companies hiring right now? Yes, they are. Are fewer companies, so this is a question. Are fewer companies hiring today than there were yesterday? Yes, of course. We're in the middle of, an, of a health crisis and an economic downturn. Yes, there are companies that have put on hiring freezes and slowdowns. And so you may have had an interview scheduled last week and they said, hang on, hang on. We're stopping the bleeding over here. We're going to resume interviewing in two more weeks. So yes, things are slowing down. But there are also companies that are ramping up. So I want you to think about the essential businesses right now in the middle of COVID-19. Healthcare, health insurance, hospitals, clinics, all of the health companies, te healthcare technology companies that are supporting hospitals and clinics, they are booming, growing, desperate for help. Everybody in the essential business world right now, they're losing workers because people are homesick, they need contract workers to come in and do pinch hitting. So think about the businesses right now that are still open, that are still helping, they need help. And I want you to consider um, going in on a contract basis, figure out what your gifts are, what your skills are, and start calling and networking into those essential businesses to figure out what you can do to help. Um, so how's that? I hope that's helpful. Tune in, sign up, there's nothing to sign up for. Show up here for our daily live streams, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. I will be showing up daily. And next week I'm gonna be doing a recruiter panel about who's hiring, how to find the jobs and how to connect with those decision makers as quickly as possible in the middle of this uh, outbreak. So good questions, good comments, keep them coming. Justin's got a tip here, do not, do not make any promises you can't keep. Yes, you know, it's like the bad breakup, you guys. Say, I just need a break. I think maybe we'll, you know, we can probably get back together in a couple of weeks. I just need a little breathing room. That doesn't work in a layoff either. You may, you are hoping to be able to bring employees back in three months. You can't promise it. So don't promise anything you can't deliver. You may be thinking about offering severance and outplacement services, but the CFO is home with COVID-19 and hasn't signed off on those funds, don't promise severance and outplacement if you can't deliver, for sure, okay? Good advice, keep it coming, everybody. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you about um, the different, here's what happens. I've talked about people being on the floor. I'm gonna share a story from the Great Recession. His name was Vince. And he came to the job club uh, that I started that's still running every Tuesday. Hello, Easter. Hello, everybody. Um, Vince came to the uh, job transition group at Easter one day and he sat quietly in the corner. We had like 120 people in the room and I saw that he was quiet and not really engaging with anybody. And so I went over and introduced myself and we started talking. And long story short, you guys, he had been unemployed for 15 months. He was the only breadwinner for his family of five. 
and he was at his wits end. He was, he was applying online every single day. He had 29 phone interviews, 29 phone interviews, AKA video interviews today, 29 times he'd been invited to the dance and nobody had taken him out on the dance floor. He hadn't gotten one single in-person interview. And he said, I, I, I'm about ready to give up. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm looking to stock shelves at Walmart. And now, you know, the, 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 the mother and wife and every, you know, listen, if you have to stock shelves at Walmart, do it. There's no shame in that. But I said, tell me about your background. Vince had been in the medical device industry for 24 years. He was a production manager who had not just the number one production team in the, in the country, he had the number one produ production team in the world before he got laid off. So I'm sure you're wondering, why did he get laid off? Crisis, financial crisis, like right now. 15 months of unemployment, he'd never had been invited to an in-person interview, and he was ready to throw away a 24-year career in medical device. I extended an arm. I said, let's do this. You can do this. But you know what I did? I said, we're not looking at your resume. We're not talking about interview practice, none of that. The first thing we need to do is unpack that layoff experience. Tell me, tell me what happened. And this amazing, incredible, kind-hearted, grown man, father of four, fell apart. And he said, it was the most horrific experience of my life. And I knew in that moment that I couldn't solve his interview skills problem until I solved that problem. And I had to put him back together again and remind him of how good and smart and talented he is and remind him of some of the successes in his career and help him put that together in star stories, par stories, success stories, and put those on his LinkedIn profile and his resume and talk about them. We had to do all that heavy lifting first before I could talk about his job search strategy or interviewing skills. Do you understand why a bad layoff is bad for people and there is a better way and you, and you must do it better? That's why. Vince, hello. By the way, I wanna let you know he's doing great. And on the heels of that, he went out and he landed himself two job interviews. Two weeks later, he got two job offers and he was back at work six weeks later because we addressed the trauma of the bad layoff. All right, are you convinced? Yes, you are, you showed up this morning. Let's get into solutions here. So how to lay off with dignity and respect. Um, I'm gonna introduce you quickly, and I wish I could bring her on camera with me today. Unfortunately, you know, again, we're pulling this stuff together last minute, and she was ready, but we did not have time to do uh, technology tests and stuff with her. So I'm gonna introduce you to her virtually, and hopefully, Heather, you are live with me in the comments and chat today and we can chat a little bit and you can chip in a little bit more if you'd like. Um, but I'm gonna share your contact details here. Um, here we go. So I'm about to share with you Heather Hefner's. I'm gonna walk you through her crisis communication guide and uh, how to let employees go with empathy and kindness during the COVID-19 epidemic. And so uh, Heather is in my private coaching circles uh, with me. And yesterday at 12 noon, we started talking about this. And I just said to everybody in passing, I said, I'm doing this live stream tomorrow. Any ideas? And she said, yes, I've got some great ideas. And so um, she put together a guide, which you are all going to get for free. Now, let me tell you, Heather has been, and I misspelled Heather's name. Heather, I'm so sorry. It's Hefner. Um, Heather Hefner, H-E-E-F-N-E-R. She put together a guide that you are going to be able to download for free today. Her company is Dart Design Studio. Why? Because she started her career at a global agency as a graphic designer doing beautiful imagery and communication pieces. And she transformed that into a business where she does executive coaching and helps companies put their best foot forward and communicate beautifully and effectively internally and externally. Do you think you need her right now? Yes, you do. If you are a business leader in the crisis right now, go to Dart Design Studio and reach out to Heather. She can help you communicate effectively right now. So that's Heather Hefner, everybody. Uh, so thank you, Heather, for joining us. Uh, we've got just a couple of minutes here. I'm going to run top level through your guide. And again, you are all going to be able to download this guide for free. So Stefan, will you please put up on the screen where they can go to get Heather's 
a guide on how to uh, lay people off with empathy and kindness. Number one, be a leader. Be a leader. Number two, be aware of your own emotions. I told you what happened when I let my emotions guide my layoff. As a director, it was really ugly. Number three, be prepared to listen. People need a safe place to freak out, cry, get angry, whatever it is that they need to do, and you need to give them that safe place. They deserve it. They deserve it. They've given you their lives. They deserve it, okay? Uh, next is to practice. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces of advice in Heather's Guide. You need to find um, a kid, maybe, <laughs> somebody you're stuck in your house with to practice the conversation with. Uh, next up, decompress. You have to take care of yourself emotionally. Um, I said yesterday in my private coaching circle, when I was a flight attendant for a year, they trained us in a crisis, in an emergency, you put your own mask on first. You need to put your own mask on first as a leader. Exercise, nice cup of tea, fill your gas tank. Um, then logistics. Let's talk about logistics. You need to do this in a private place. You need to do this in a private place. Do not do this at somebody's cube. Um, okay, number two, get to the point. Heather said this, Corey Powell, who's been a journalist, uh, brilliant journalist his entire career and had to lay off hundreds of people during the last Great Recession when he was at the Star Tribune. He said, get to the point. Don't wait 15 minutes to tell them why they're in that room with you. Uh, number three, Heather recommends, tell them why. Listen, this is a much easier conversation right now than it was six months ago. The reason for the layoff is COVID-19 and the stock market, okay? Easy conversation. Get to the point and tell them why. They'll understand. Number four, provide resources for them. Your employees deserve a packet of information about the resources that are available to them. What are you paying them? Are you paying them their paycheck? Are you giving them two weeks severance? Are you giving them unemployment services? And don't stop there. The federal government has resources for unemployed Americans. Your state has resources for unemployed Americans. I already showed you what the state of Minnesota has to offer. The Dislocated Worker Program is a national program for unemployed Americans. They deserve to know how to tap into those resources on the very first day when they're unemployed. There's a termination letter that was um, I saw that was online recommended by HR leaders. And in that, they said, in your termination letter, you say that within the week, HR will be contacting you. You can't leave somebody sitting for five days. It's not okay. Give them a packet of information and action steps that they can start to act on right away. Um, give them details and do give them the courtesy of a follow-up meeting. And that should be probably five days or a week later to check back in on their benefits and paychecks and 401k and all of those things, all right? And number seven, close with empathy. Um, Download her free guide, okay? I'm going to throw in a couple more tips here from my friend, Barb Duzik. Again, Barb is an HR. Oh, guess what? I've been sharing my screen um, and I've been off camera. That's all right. The next guest that can't come on live with me but took some time to put together some thoughts for me is Barb Dusick. With She's director of, of HR with Imagine IT. Barb is the one who, who picked me up off the floor as a rookie manager and helped me lay people off and helped me stay whole and helped me keep my team together. She sat in those conversations with me when I was laying people off and kicked me under the table to shut me up. <laughs> so anyway, um, here are Barb's top level tips. In addition, they echo what Heather had to say and there are a couple of other nuggets in here that I thought were really wonderful. Um, Be on the side of the impacted employee. Always have two people in the room. So Barb is an HR leader. She has been hip to hip with legal for her entire career. You do need to think about lawsuits as, an, as a company. You need to make sure you do this well and that you um, understand your legal implica implications. Um, and one of those is to always have two people in the room. Um, but yes, because of legal, but do you know what she said? She said, you need two people in the room because sometimes the manager who's delivering the bad news is falling apart and the HR leader can step into the conversation and give that business leader a chance to compose themselves. Um, beautiful. Prepare an outline, consult with legal about a furlough, a layoff, a reduction in force. Um, because each, how you lay people off and the language that you use, if it's a furlough, a layoff, or a riff, that affects, please listen to me, 
that affects the ability of your employees to get MFMLA, paid sick leave, unemployment insurance. What you do on your side affects somebody's ability to get help on the other side. Okay, number eight, according to Barb, never, ever, ever during these conversations state that you hope somebody will choose to retire um, or that you might be able to rehire them when things get better. Don't tell people what to do. You have no idea what's going on inside their life, okay? But do, do let them know how much you've appreciated their work for you and remind them about their strengths. Please give them, this is my advice, you need to give them two or three things that you have appreciated about working with them so that they can leave feeling strong about the quality of the work that they did for you. The reason that Vince had been unemployed for 15 months wasn't because of the Great Recession. I helped people get jobs in two weeks in the middle of the Great Recession. That wasn't the problem. The problem for him was his lack of confidence due to a bad breakup. Okay. Um, and then once some, okay, and then internal communications. Once you have terminated an employee, you need to turn around and communicate internally immediately to your employees. And this is something I know I'm running over you guys. I'm going to run over for five or six minutes today because this is such an important topic. You have to also take care of your internal employee employees. So I'm going to give a shout out to another, um, I'm gonna give a shout out to another one of my favorite um, uh, HR leaders, Elva Betts. She found me on LinkedIn in the middle of the Great Recession. And there was something that I had posted about, uh, I don't know, it was an article or a video or something about uh, how to land a job after a layoff. And she reached out to me and said, we're in the middle of a reduction in force. It's going to affect hundreds of people. And I would like to bring you in to do two things. Number one, to take care of the people that we are letting go. I'd like you to come in before we lay them off now. You don't have the luxury of that time in the middle of the COVID-19, and we all understand that, but she chose to do that. They had the luxury of time. Come in and help people put their plan together before their last day. What a beautiful gift. And the other thing she said is, I want you to do a workshop, and we actually did four workshops for the people that were left behind. Think about a bad divorce, okay? In the middle of a bad divorce, the two people that hate each other or don't love each other anymore, get separated. Think about all of the people impacted on the other side, the mother, the mother-in-laws, the, the brother-in-laws, the children, the cousins. Um, it's the breakup of a family and a layoff. If somebody has been at a company for a long time, it is a lot like a divorce and it feels like it to people that are leaving. It also feels like it to people on the inside. Plus they're petrified. They are afraid that they're next and they're, that their head is on the chopping block. So shout out to Elva for bringing Arbez in to help in the middle of that situation. I just, I, I really admire you for that. And Elva didn't stop there, you guys. She wasn't aware of all of the state resources and she knew I was deeply embedded in the DEED Career Force Center community. And she asked me to help her put together a list of resources that she could hand to people. So anyway, best practices, folks. If you guys have anything else to share, I see here that we have a comment here. Um, you know, if you've been affected by a layoff or a closure, there are companies that are still hiring and they are considered essential businesses. I can tell you, uh, look, great. We've got somebody jumping in. Career Force Minnesota. I bet that might be Gina uh, jumping, jumping in here. Career Force, look at the, um, oh, um, www.careerforceminnesota.com. You can find out about the Career Force Center resources to help you. Okay. Um, Jason Waddell. Hey, Jason. Minnesota Apprenticeship Initiative is an opportunity for you to go find some work. Okay, so there's hope. You are not alone. There are people out there for you. And as I wrap things up today, um, as I wrap things up today, I, I want to look you in the eye and I want to tell you what you needed to hear when you were 16. And I want to tell you what you need to hear now as a grown adult. You're going to be okay. You are smart. You are talented. You are an amazing human being. You can do this. This may be one of the hardest things that you've ever done in your career. And if you are a first time manager who is laying people off for the first time, I want you to know we all get it. We know why you're doing it. We also know that you care as long as you show us and you're not alone. If you don't know how to do this, reach out to your HR leader. If you are a small company and you don't have an HR leader, 
reach out to Heather Hefner at Dart Studio. She's put together a COVID-19 special offering to help small businesses do this. Call her, Dart Design Studio. Um, you're not alone. Google it. Google it and watch this live stream again. Download this guide. You're not alone. Reach out to your network of, of peers who have done this before and tell them you need some help. Let your loved ones and your family and your friends support you and fill your gas tank and give you the emotional strength that you need to do this and do it well. People deserve more than a text message. People deserve more than a, than a sign on the door. There are many small businesses that are unfortunately have no finance, they have no money in savings and they're gonna go out of business, you guys. And some of them are considering putting a note on the door to their employees that says closed, sorry. That is not okay, don't do that, okay? Please, you don't have to, there is a better way, but you're not alone. All right, Heather, hello. Um, Heather said, it is also your job as a leader to support the survivors. And thank you, Heather, for chipping in. Heather is talking about the people left behind as survivors of what's happening inside your company. They are going through trauma also. Take care of them and have the, have the courage and the empathy to take the extra step and spend a little bit more money to take care of people on the inside. And I'm going to wrap up. Here's what I do know. Those of you that are with me today and that are, if you are a business leader who wants to do this right, you are thinking we have no money to give severance. We have no money to give outplacement services. I want you to go to the CEO and the CFO and I want you to look them in the eye and I want you to say to them, here's the deal. If we do this badly, we're not only gonna hurt the people on the, that are leaving, we are gonna lose our best employees on the back end because they are gonna wa they're watching us. They are watching what we're doing and how we're treating people on the way out. They are gonna quit because then they will, they'll be, they will know that we don't care about them, okay? So if we do this badly and we don't spend a little bit of time and money to help people exit gracefully, we're gonna lose our best employees at a time when we can't afford to lose them. Number two, those people who, who experience a bad breakup are gonna go out online and tell every single one of their friends that we treated them like dirt on the way out. It's gonna be really bad for business. Number three, the people that are leaving are never gonna, are never gonna buy our products. Number four, they're never going to come back when we beg them to come back three months from now. Number five, um, they're never going to refer their friends as clients or employees to us. Never again in their life are they going to refer us clients or employees. These are the ramifications of a bad layoff, and you can avoid them. That conversation is probably going to help you get the time and the grace and a little bit of money that you need to lay people off with dignity and respect. I hope this has been helpful. I'm gonna wrap this up by saying you are not alone. Our Bez is here for you every single day until we get through this, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central. Special shout out again to our friends around the world. I got an, a note this morning about a, a dear friend of mine. Um, I was at his wedding, he was at mine, he's in South Africa, and he's having to lay people off and his wife, tagged him on this live stream. So I see you and we are here for you, all of you, and you are here for us. So keep the comments coming, keep joining. If you are a business leader who is stepping up and leaning in, join the conversation. If you wanna come in as a guest speaker on one of our live streams, we would love to have you. Uh, reach out to us at ourbez.com on the contact page. Thank you all so much. Have a great, mm, have a good rest of day and remember, to eat, sleep, love the people that you care about, hug the people that you care about if they're in your house with you and give virtual hugs to everybody around you. We are going to get through this. We've done hard things before. We can do them again. And with that, I'm way over time. Thank you, thank you for listening and joining me today, sharing your wisdom. I appreciate it, keep it up. Together, we're gonna do this.